सर क्या आप जानते हैं कि वो कौन सी अंतरराष्ट्रीय सीमाएं हैं जो बहुत ज्यादा जटिल हैं बहुत ज्यादा उलझी हुई हैं सर वैसे जानकारी तो मैं रखता हूँ बहुत बाकी जैसे भारत है पाकिस्तान है चीन है ये सीमाओं का तो मुझे मालूम है बाकी ये कितनी उलझी हुई है इसका तो मुझे पता नहीं है यहाँ तक क्या था सीमाओं का बार थोड़ी बहुत जानकारी है मुझे कि यार देश की इससे जुड़ी हुई सीमाएं यार देश की इससे जुड़ी हुई पर कितनी उलझी हुई कितनी उलझी हुई इसका अंदाजा नहीं हूँ ना इसके बारे में जानकारी सर सीमाएं तो बहुत है दुनिया भर में और विवादित सीमाएं भी बहुत रही हैं सर और आसपास देशों के पड़ोसी मुल्कों से बनती भी नहीं सर ये थोड़ी बात मालूम है इसके बारे में ठीक है सर आज हम आपको जो वीडियो दिखाने वाले हैं वो बहुत ही ज्यादा ज्ञानवर्धक वीडियो होने वाला है जी क्योंकि इसमें आप देखेंगे दुनिया भर की ऐसी सीमाएं जो बहुत ज्यादा कॉम्प्लेक्स है बहुत ज्यादा जटिल है तो आप इस वीडियो को देखें और देख अपना फीडबैक जटिल सब जटिल मतलब बहुत उलझा मामला बता रहा सर आप दुनिया भर का वो बड़ा अनुभव होगा सर अपने लिए तो सही बहुत बहुत बड़ी जानकारी सर वैसे मैं कह रहा हूँ जैसा आपने बताया कि सीमा कितनी क्या उलझी अगर आप दिखाओगे तो भी हमारे को जानकारी मालूम पड़ी जाएगी इतनी The international border between two countries defines where one country ends and another begins. This is something that should be incredibly simple but often isn't. International borders come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some are simply an imaginary line in the middle of the street while others are much more defined. And some are even guarded 24/7. But before we begin, I need to quickly define a couple of terms. Enclave and exclave. An enclave is a country or part of a country that is entirely surrounded by another country, while an exclave is part of a country that is geographically separated from the rest of the country. In this example, country A is an enclave of country B because it's totally surrounded by it. In this next example, Y is an exclave of country A. Exclaves aren't necessarily always enclaves too, either because they have more than one border or because they have a coastline, or both. In this final example, X is both an enclave and an exclave. It's an enclave of country B and an exclave of country A. There's three countries in the world that are enclaved by another country. The first of which is the Vatican City, home of the Pope and the smallest country in the world, which is an enclave of Italy. And Italy apparently loves enclaves because it also has the country of San Marino enclaved within its borders. But if that's not enough to convince you Italy loves enclaves, then take a look at Campione d'Italia, an Italian exclave which is an enclave within Switzerland. This tiny municipality, home to 2,000 Italians, uses the Swiss franc as its currency and is exempt from EU VAT, a fact which is greatly taken advantage of in the form of Europe's largest casino. So, Italy is a country that has not one but two countries within its borders, and part of it is enclaved within another country. The final and by far largest enclaved country in the world is Lesotho, with a population of just over 2 million, is surrounded by South Africa. To put the size difference into perspective, here's a comparison between San Marino and Vatican City. And there, here's Lesotho. Lesotho is 70,000 times the size of Vatican City. Now, a country within a country is all very well and good, but it's not exactly that complex. So let's take things up a notch. We've looked at enclaves, now let's look at enclaves within enclaves. Also known as counter enclaves or second order enclaves. Now, I'm not talking about country A within country B within country C. Well, that would be an enclave within an enclave, there's no examples of that in the world. I'm talking about country A within country B within country A. Once again, there's three examples. The least complex of which is in the Middle East and the border between the United Arab Emirates and Oman. Here we can see a United Arab Emirates exclave which is an enclave of an Omani exclave which is itself an enclave of the United Arab Emirates. And this is the least complex of the three examples. Next we move over to Europe where things start to get a bit ridiculous with the border between the Netherlands and Belgium and the interlocking municipalities of Barl Nassau and Barl Hertog which is a little something like this. In total there are 22 Belgian enclaves and 8 Dutch enclaves, 7 of which are counter enclaves. But these aren't just imaginary lines, every single inch of the border within the town is clearly marked letting you know what country you are And the border passes through just about anything. It passes through streets, so next door neighbours may not be living in the same country. House numbers clearly indicate which country the residents are living in. It also passes through shops where you might select your items in one country and pay for them in another. Restaurants and cafes where different tables are in different countries. 
car parks and people <laughs> oh, park yeah. illegally park in two countries at the same time yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. people's God, houses sometimes in the bar I'll wake up in the Netherlands and make their breakfast in Belgium <laughs> which country do these people live in if the border passes right through their house well the answer is very simple wherever your front door is that's what country you live in oh, well, it's simple unless you live in this house, in which the border passes directly <laughs> through the front yeah, door. This is the only house that's part of both countries. It has two doorbells, one for each country, and two house numbers because it has two addresses. Before 1995, the borders weren't marked and were left vague. This caused an unfortunate situation for a Belgian man living in Belgium. Or so he thought. But in 1995, when the border was accurately marked, it was revealed he was actually living in the Netherlands, not Belgium. <laughs> Legally at this point, he would have to change his address over to the Netherlands, but unwilling to go through the bureaucratic nightmare of having to change which country he pays his taxes to, and change which company provides his utilities, he decided against it. He decided instead, to move his front door. Genius. <laughs> Living in Baal might sound like a bit of a nightmare, but it isn't really. Because both countries are part of the EU's Schengen area, borders are completely open, allowing free travel between the countries. And since 2002, both countries use the Euro. And there's also no language barrier because Dutch is the official language of Northern Belgium. But just when you thought things couldn't possibly get more complicated, wait until you see the enclave complex between India and Bangladesh. This single border alone comprises 80% of the world's enclaves, with 106 Indian enclaves within Bangladesh and 92 enclaves of Bangladesh within India. And of the combined 198 enclaves, 24 of them are second order enclaves. And this border also has the world's only third order enclave. That's right, an enclave within an enclave, within an enclave, that is, part of India, inside part of Bangladesh, inside part of India, which is inside Bangladesh. But as ridiculous as this is, unfortunately it's actually a very serious issue and completely different from the situation in Europe. India and Bangladesh don't have open borders, so for the 50,000 people living in the enclaves they're basically trapped. The governments don't provide anything for them so they don't have access to basic life essentials such as running water, electricity or gas, and there's no schools or hospitals within the enclaves, and the emergency services won't cross any borders so crime is extremely prevalent. In 2011, the governments of both countries agreed to sort out the enclaves by swapping land, but more than two years later and still nothing has changed. However, some small progress has been made. The team via corridor, a narrow strip of Indian land separating the largest Bangladesh enclave from the mainland, has been leased to them by the Indian government, allowing residents to travel to the mainland. Although in saying that, this was first proposed back in 1974 and took nearly 40 years to come to an agreement. Moving away from enclave now and onto the land that we want, which is in the African desert between Egypt and Sudan. Where exactly the border is, however, is debatable. If you ask Egypt, they'll tell you it's here. But if you ask Sudan, they'll tell you it's here. The overlapping border claims create two areas of land, and both countries claim the same land, the Halaib Triangle, leaving the adjacent land unclaimed by both countries. Neither country can claim the land known as Bir Tawil, as they would have to give up their claim to the much more desirable oh. land. If we compare the two pieces of land, the Halaib Triangle is 10 times bigger, has access to the Red Sea and has several settlements and small villages where Bir Tawil is landlocked and completely uninhabited. The origin of the dispute dates back to 1899, before Sudan was an independent country and was a condominium between the United Kingdom and Egypt known as Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. The border was set at the 22nd parallel. Then, three years later, the British drew a new line which they called the administrative boundary, which better reflected the usage of the land. This is because of the Egyptian tribe that used the land south of the 22nd parallel and the people living in the Halaib Triangle were culturally more closely related to that of the Sudanese population. Therefore, in 1956, when Sudan became independent, they assumed the administrative boundary was the border, while Egypt assumed it was the 22nd parallel. The triangle is currently administered by Egypt, but most maps simply use a dotted line for the disputed border. Bir Tawil is the only unclaimed land outside of Antarctica. And speaking of Antarctica, this is another place for complex borders. That's right, even a continent with no government or permanent population has international borders. Well, kind of. They're more claims to land than actual borders. Parts of Antarctica are claimed by the United Kingdom, Norway, Australia, France, New Zealand, and this is where things get complicated, Chile and Argentina. 
The land to the southwest is unclean. So basically, this land is claimed by three countries and land is claimed by no countries at all. The reason no one has claimed it is because of the Antarctica Treaty. Article 4 of said treaty states that the treaty does not recognise, dispute, nor establish territorial sovereignty claims. No new claim shall be asserted while the treaty is in force. The treaty is signed by 50 countries, including all countries that have claims of land on the continent, although Russia and the United States have reserved the right to claim land. This means that any new claims made on the continent will be unrecognised, and basically that all current claims have no official sovereignty over their claimed land. The final place to look at for complex borders is the island of Cyprus. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking Cyprus doesn't have any complex borders, or, you know, any borders for that matter, but Cyprus is an absolute minefield of border complexities. The island is split roughly in half by the UN buffer zone which separate the Republic of Cyprus from the unrecognised self-declared independent country of Northern Cyprus, and then there's the sovereign base areas under British control. But the complications don't end there, we're back to enclaves and exclaves again with the Northern Cyprus exclave on the northwest coast of the island, and within the eastern sovereign base area of the Kelia there's four exclaves of Cyprus, three of which are enclaves, two of which are so close they're only separated by a British road. And if we take a closer look right here, we can see the same again, a British road through Cyprus. And this is the only part of the island not split by the UN buffer zone. The British road basically acts as the de facto international border. But it's not actually an international border because Northern Cyprus is considered occupied territory of the Republic of Cyprus and is almost totally unrecognised as a country. Only one UN member recognises Northern Cyprus. Turkey. Turkey. Which is unsurprising given that the official name of Northern Cyprus is the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. The cause of the border irregularities go back to before 1960 when the island of Cyprus was a British colony. Then in 1960 when Cyprus gained independence, the United Kingdom kept the land around their RAF bases given their strategic locations just off the Middle East. Then in 1974, Turkey invaded Cyprus and took about 40% of their land. Barriers were built in the middle of the island which is now guarded by UN peacekeeping forces. Then in 1983, the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus was established and not much has changed since then. Of course, this is by no means an exhaustive list. There's plenty more complex borders in the world, like the border between North and South Korea, which technically isn't a border because technically they're still at war, or the maritime border between the Diomede Islands, which also happens to be the international dateline. Therefore, despite only being four kilometers between the islands, there's a 23 hour time difference. But those are topics for another day. Thanks for watching. बहुत बड़ा ज्ञान वर्धक का समंदर था भैया ज्ञान का इतना गहरा समंदर था कि आज तक मारा भी नहीं तुम्हें हैरान हुआ कि भारत और बांग्ला अपना पड़ोसी बोल रहे मतलब ये कि घर के अंदर पकाए वहाँ पे उन्हें रे यहाँ पे ये तो वाले काम हो गया हाँ वो घर के अंदर पकाओ और गेट निकाली के समंतारी कितनी करी को धन लगा मतलब जैसे एक हिस्सा वहाँ पे भी अभी अपना कहाँ पे एस क्लियम में और एक हिस्सा ये इन किले का हिरावा है और एक हिस्सा इसका वहाँ पे आएगा एस क्लियम में इससे बड़ा मेरे को ज्ञान मिल ही नहीं सकता ये वीडियो देख के बहुत प्यारा बिंदु मिला है मुझे क्योंकि नीदरलैंड और बेल्जियम के बीच में कुछ भी नहीं � वो दूसरी बार रोबे जब जा भी वहाँ विवाह विवाह चलिया हैगा या कहीं पेरे दारी लगी है मैं हाथ जोड़ के उनसे रिक्वेस्ट करता हूँ बहुत प्यारी कि ऐसा ही नहीं नीदरलैंड और बेल्जियम सरी का जाना चाहिए क्योंकि लोग बाव बहुत परेशानी उठाना पड़ती है वो बहुत दो उठाने पड़ते हैं उनको सरी � तो सर आपने वीडियो देखी थी तो सर वहाँ तक के दावे ठोक दिए देशों ने कि ये मेरी जगह अब सर वहाँ क्या इंसान बचेगा क्या करेंगे वहाँ संधि तक बना दी <laughs> आज हमारा बाबू भाई शादी समारोह में गए हैं आज उनकी कमी हम पूरी करेंगे संधि से आते संधि से जाते ये चिट्टी आती है बिन पूछे जाते के घर कब आओगे के घर कब आओगे के घर तुम बिन सोना सोना है संदेह से आते हैं धन्यवाद